Good evening. This is Andrew Sheets with The Third Heaven Traveler. The Third Heaven Traveler is a blog about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and Him in us who believe on Him and how we apply this existence to our daily lives. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. We are saved if we believe Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. The title of this study is the Laodicean Church. And the Laodicean Church age does not understand discipleship whatsoever. Dear Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. May this work be submitted for your glory. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Merit Natha. Uh, Yesterday, I posted a blog and video titled, The Great Commission is one of the most used and most misunderstood scriptures in the Bible. Here is the uh, associated study link. This is the blog and this is the video. I urge you to watch it. This will help you in understanding what I'm doing here. Also, for related studies, I have Check Your Salt on Discipleship. This is the blog link in the video. Now, this morning, I finished a study on the Vatican, a Catholic, and a Christian. And this is based on ecumenism, the Jesuits, and how doctrine matters. In this study, we can see how important, how critical it is for the saints to be equipped, to have the knowledge to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed by rightly dividing the word of truth in accordance with 2 Timothy chapter 2.15. That means study. Dividing means searching every word of Scripture, not chopping out parts of Scripture, throwing it out like the hyper-dispensationalists do. Now, when I posted this study on the Great Commission and how the Great Commission go out into all the world, right, baptize in the name, in my name, now, uh, one of the comments I got is from Expose the Darkness, Sister Ursula Expose the Darkness 511. Here is the link to her YouTube channel. I strongly urge you to subscribe. She just uploaded another video. It's astounding, exposing the Judaizers, these Zionist, these Messianic, Noahide law makers, keepers, and their agenda, their evil agenda. But she commented on my video, The Great Commission, and I want to share this. This is very important here. She writes, I've seen that the Great Commission has been abused to make it all about bringing in large numbers and not making proper disciples. This is like a man who fathers many children and does not have the means or the will or the understanding to train them up properly. This mentality has, in my opinion, come full circle to bite the evangelical movement because so often missionaries were still very young and unable to uh, to disciple new converts properly. Let me stop and add here, One of the Laodicean churches that I came out of recently, and I was in there for a while, I tried to talk, speak with the pastor. They had so many things going right for them, and then they continually would talk just like the lukewarm, not neither hot nor cold. He would spew both things out of his mouth, getting into perverted Bible translation, sometimes referring to the King James, and on and on and deeper and deeper into apostasy. 
One of the things they did is, truthfully, they did take a pretty large chunk of their budget, their 501c3 perverted budget, but they did send a lot of money out to missionary works, and they would re, would they group these people up in groups and send them out to the mission fields. And one of the uh, women that were in one of these groups, they went to South America and Colombia, of all places, and uh, I'm bilingual and was a licensed, uh, actually still licensed teacher. And uh, I know a considerable amount of Spanish. And I taught it. I worked overseas. I spent time overseas, years in Spanish-speaking countries. Long story. Anyway, and I spent over six years living in a foreign country doing God's work, if you want to say missionary work, I was doing missionary work, not under some brick and mortar church, that's for sure, but more like spec ops, if you will, as the Lord led me. But they had a group of people getting ready to go on a mission trip. Now, please, I'm not, disclaimer, I'm not speaking against doing mission work. When the Lord puts a burden on your heart to go someplace and share the gospel, the true gospel with a King James Bible, do it. Praise God. God forbid I would never try to say, we don't need missionaries. No, God forbid. No. But here again, this woman, when I found out where they were going in Colombia, I worked with the Colombian government for over two years working on FMS, foreign military sale contracts, speaking Spanish with them. And I knew that area was not the best area to be in. And there was a high rate of hijackings, of a possible, very high probability of kidnappings, da da da, on and on. Anyway, so when I asked them what their plan was, don't have one. When they came back, they only did a two week trip. They brought back a report saying that they had one night they saved, uh, two had a 2,000 and some souls were saved in one night, 2,000 there, night, one here, 500 here, 300 here. And just for a couple of weeks, they said they had something like 10,000 souls saved. All these false conversions without properly, and they're, I'm not even going to go into it, but there is so much truth to this. So, Sister uh, Ursula from Expose the Darkness knows what she's talking about here. They're unable to disciple. Now, they didn't even, I believe a lot of these were false conversions. What does that mean? Just like the Billy Graham Crusades, they get up repeat this recipe, say you're sorry for your sins, say uh, you love Jesus, you believe he died on the cross, which they don't even use the gospel. They say, you believe Jesus died on the cross. Yep, amen. Yeah, he died for your sins. Amen. Okay, praise God. Then watch this. Now confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Yep, did it. And then now go to church. You're saved. You're good to go. You're sorry for your sins. Boom, you need Jesus. Boom, you're good to go. Only the Holy Spirit it's called what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, what leads to godly sorrow, which leads to repentance. Repentance comes from godly sorrow. Only the Holy Spirit can lead that. So even let's say some of these people, let's say they were truly saved. Boom, they're gone. You guys are good to go. Let me continue. So what happens? In the way people embrace false doctrine, more and more, because the error gets passed on from one generation to the next. Also, many zealous ones went to secretly and oftentimes in deceitful ways preach the gospel to Jews in Israel, which caused a counter movement, and it is very this very counter movement called Jews for Judaism, and then you got the Jews for Jesus, which has actually become one of the greatest movements which works to make Christianity seem foolish and wicked. And many Christians who are weak in the faith fall from grace through the famous Tovia Singer and his teachings. Now, let me uh, clarify this when they fall from grace. What uh, Sister Ursula is talking about, I've clarified this with her before, if someone is truly saved, 
their they will their works will be burned at the beam seat. The grace that's covered them for their works in a workman approved that they have no covering because they've worked uh, they've strived unlawfully. Fallen from grace literally means they were running around playing Christians. They were weak in the faith. In fact, as John writes, they were among us, but were not of us, and they therefore they've left. Now, this famous Tovia singer and his teachings is a perfect example. Uh, so she continues, I'm sorry to say, but it is not just the Pharisees who fulfilled this scripture. In Matthew 23, 15, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You compass the sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. For me personally, I've always seen this scripture in Ezekiel as a perfect description of how I experienced the church and how they handle the born again believer, not doing the very needed things one should do for a new believer by proper discipleship, but actually exposing them in the field when they are far too immature spiritually. Now, let me add here, this is another problem. When someone is on the fence, let me say a brand new baby Christian, they're talking like they're a Christian, they walk like they're a Christian, they've learned how to mimic what it's like to be a Christian, carrying a Bible, even quoting some scriptures and saying a hallelujah here and there. But they're still coming to the knowledge of what their salvation. They're coming to that point when the Holy Spirit is going to convict them when they are, in fact, received the gospel, falling on, down on their knees. I'm not saying they literally have to, but believe me, most of us do. And with a broken, contrite heart to works repentance and to salvation, cry out to the Lord, I need you, Lord. I need a Savior. I'm a wicked completely wretched man that or woman that I am, I need a savior. At that point, I believe your word that you came, you when you came and you died on the cross, you did it for me, my sins, as it is written. I know that you were buried, you rose again the third day according to scriptures. I believe this, I believe and I hold on to this. This is my salvation. I believe only believing this saves me. That's it. But this is only the beginning. This is the beginning. Uh, let me continue what she writes here. So in Ezekiel 16, 4, and as for thy nativity in that day, uh, correction, and as for thy nativity in the day thou wast born, thy navel was not cut, neither wast thou washed in water to supple thee, Thou wast not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. None I pitied thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou wast cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou wast born. They cast you into the open field. This is what they tell the young missionary. Run out to the field, the field, the harvest the, the harvest is ready. What is, why is the harvest, right? And they leave you to fend for yourself without proper discipleship, yet expecting you to work in the field by bringing in souls, as they call it. God then goes on to say how it was he himself who pitied and raised his people up. In another place, it speaks of the cruel mother who does not provide what the child needs to grow. In Lamentations chapter 4, 3, the daughter of my people has become cruel like the ostriches in the wilderness. The tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst. Uh, the young children ask bread and no man breaketh unto them. The problem was less pronounced in the past because most children were trained up in the earliest days in Sunday school with much better Bible understanding uh, though that also was problematic because of the extreme dogmatism. 
separate subject for a different day. But as this is speaking to natural children, now for the spiritual children, the born again believers, it has always been like this. The harvest is plentiful. That's what I was trying to remember. The harvest is plentiful, the true workers few, and the wolves all over the show. They're everywhere. Now, and she writes, thank you for addressing the subject, brother. It's time for some serious removal of beams from our own eyes for Christians. Amen. Lord, I pray we take this study. Thank you, Lord, when the body of Christ comes together, parts where the true body of Christ, the church of Philadelphia, we are geographically splintered, scattered, fragmented all over the world. But Lord, we're united, jointly fit together, providing, contributing our gifts in unity and love of Christ our Lord and Savior. Oh, even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.